There was once a time when going on a date with a stranger you met online was a strange concept. However, today, millennials are leading the charge to transform the dating industry and make online dating universally accepted. There are now over 1,500 dating apps or websites vying for the attention of single men and women and matching them with one another. In fact, around 15% of adults in the United States, or about 50 million people, say they have used or continue to use websites or mobile dating apps in their search for love. And according to a January 2018 Statista survey, 13% of 18 to 29 year olds admit to dating or marrying a partner or spouse they met online. According to Ibis World, dating services in the United States generated $3 billion in revenue in 2018. And by the end of 2022, the total revenue growth of the online dating market is expected to reach $3.6 billion. So how did dating apps become so popular? How big is this industry? And how do these apps run or make money? Though matchmaking is one of the oldest industries, online matchmaking or online dating is currently getting very popular. It is becoming a social trend to increase contacts and find a suitable partner. In fact, online dating is now the category with the highest number of available services and the highest number of users. It is basically a service provided by a web-based computer system or smartphone application that uses a smartphone's GPS location feature to improve the process of online dating. It also has quick access to digital photo galleries and mobile wallets. The online dating industry first came about in 1995 with the debut of Match.com. Match.com was the first site of its kind, narrowing down profiles based on user preferences. Since then, online dating has changed tremendously. The increasing adoption of smartphones and the growing penetration of the internet around the world are some of the significant factors promoting the growth of the online dating. Moreover, the increased dating and marriage outside of traditional social circles, as well as rising rates of interracial marriages, have brought a huge change in the society. Furthermore, people nowadays are very particular when it comes to finding a partner. They consider the partner's outlook on life, like-mindedness on critical issues, and likes and dislikes. This has boosted the online dating market significantly. According to a study, 41% of singles have used online dating apps or sites at least once in their life. Among these singles, nearly 68% of them are males. Although some may believe that this is not a good idea in the long run, many users have undoubtedly found people who share their interests and hobbies on these apps. In the last few years, several mobile dating apps have exploded in popularity, in which Tinder, Bumble, and OkCupid are on top. Moreover, Hinge, Plenty of Fish, and other dating apps are all owned by Match Group. These leading dating apps generate enormous revenue. From an economics perspective, dating occurs in a market, which we refer to as the dating market. The term market may seem strange to non-economists, but it is a nominal place where supply and demand operate, and hence a market in the abstract sense. The market for dating apps is rapidly expanding, and the revenue from dating apps is rapidly increasing all over the world. Tinder and co. profits continued to rise even during the pandemic, when most businesses were struggling to stay afloat. Tinder is the most downloaded dating app, according to Statista. Bumble is now an $8 billion company. Meanwhile, Match.com has become a $45 billion company. In fact, Match also brought in revenue of $2.4 billion in 2020, along with Tinder accounting for $1.4 billion of that figure. In fact, the revenue for the dating app was $2.52 billion in 2019, and it is expected to reach $4.6 billion by 2026. So, how do dating apps make money while still keeping the user's utility in mind? What is the secret? There are three major strategies that help dating apps in making money. 1. Paid Subscriptions Some online dating sites charge users a monthly or annual membership fee that is billed at regular intervals in order for them to use their services. This is a usual feature in which users pay a fee to use an app for a set amount of time or to unlock additional features. Dating sites make money by offering various pricing tiers, beginning with a basic plan with lower fees and progressing to one or more premium membership programs with higher fees. The fee can be paid on a monthly basis or all at once, for example, yearly subscription. If the user chooses a one-time payment over a long period of time, 
and it can be 10 pounds per month or 110 pounds per year, while discounts can also be included in this strategy. Two, advertising and brand partnerships. Ads are another way for dating apps to make money, and it is the oldest model in the online market sphere. Depending on the ad models available, dating apps make money from ad views, clicks, or transactions. Advertisements can take many forms, including banner ads, texts, context ads, video ads, surveys, and so on. Most apps, on the other hand, offer ad-free access to premium subscribers, with ads visible only to free users. 3. In-app purchases In-app purchases of additional points or functions is also a good way to monetize any app. Many dating apps allow you to purchase premium features for one-time use. In most cases, these purchases are virtual gifts to be sent to dates or profile boosts, making a profile page more attractive. Bumble, for example, allows free members to buy the option to extend a match for 24 hours once per day, while Bumble Boost subscribers can do so multiple times. For example, on Tinder, which makes the other 30% of its revenue from a la carte purchases, you can buy packs of super likes and Tinder boosts, like specialty trading cards. Now, you must be thinking, how do these dating apps work? They have become popular for finding the perfect matches for everyone. So how do they do that? Basically, dating apps are search engines. They use algorithms to make match recommendations based on your data, which includes personal information, such as your location and age, preferences you set, and app activity. So how does this algorithm work? While there's no specific public information about the algorithms used by dating apps, it is assumed that the majority of them employ collaborative filtering. This means that the algorithm makes predictions based on the user's personal preferences as well as the general consensus. Most apps will ask you a series of questions or require you to list your preferences, and an algorithm will evaluate your responses and pair you with potential partners. It's essentially a gamification of social interaction. The apps also assume that love is, to some extent, quantifiable. Love follows patterns, and these algorithms use those patterns to suggest compatible partners across the network. Artificial intelligence is also being used by various online dating service providers to advise or suggest to their customers whether or not to go on a first date with someone they meet online. For example, eHarmony, one of the leading online dating service providers, recently announced the development of an AI-powered feature that encourages users to suggest meeting in person after chatting in the app for a while. However, it's a logical pattern-based model, and humans are far more complex than that. To better reflect the human experience, the algorithm must take into account a wide range of tastes that are constantly changing. Now there is an important point that I want to highlight. If an app perfectly matches everyone, it means that it is working fine, right? But doesn't that also mean that it's losing users? I mean, if machine learning increases the number of stable matches created, then it may lead to happy couples leaving the platform. So, should these apps be concerned that by improving its matching protocols and tools, it will stifle its own growth in the long run? Well, dating apps require both good technology and a large subscriber base in order for users to find matches. However, efficient matchmaking results in more accounts being deleted and thus fewer subscribers. For this reason, they are providing substandard technology to their customers on purpose, and they purposely eliminate great matches. Now, you must think that they would not last long if they were unable to satisfy their customers. So, to address this issue, they provide better algorithms to premium subscription customers in order to satisfy their customers or stay competitive. Hence, the online dating industry is clearly here to stay. Some may argue that it has already altered society's fabric, resulting in stronger, more diverse marriages. But it will be fascinating to see what comes next, whether the death of such apps or a success of swiping. If you found this video informative and enjoyed the content, make sure to subscribe to our channel and hit the like button as well. And if you have any questions, feel free to ask us in the comment section below. We will be happy to answer them for you. Thank you for watching.